Welcome, everybody, to the Joe Wentz Project Podcast. Appreciate you joining. I hope everybody's doing well today. And it is a beautiful Tuesday, four twenty five, two 2017 It's very nice outside. It was nice to wake up to see the sunshine for a change. Seems like all we've had here for the past couple of days is just heavy, heavy rain. <laughs> So it's really nice, and um, there was something that was brought to my attention uh, last night that uh, my wife actually brought it to my attention, and she uh, posted on my uh, timeline on Facebook about Greg Allman. Uh, there was a rumor going around that Greg Allman was in hospice, and of course, everything you see online you have to take with a grain of salt because you know you just you just don't know if it's true or a hoax or somebody trying to get attention you just you just don't never know but uh she did post something on my timeline that uh, greg actually addressed and said that he was not in hospice he was at his house and uh, he hoped to see everybody soon on another tour so i thought that was fantastic i thought that was great man i uh, i've Always really loved the Almond Brothers. Uh, Greg Almond always loved his voice. Uh, just you know, just thought he was a really, really great musician, great singer, and he seems like a really, really down to earth kind of dude. Uh, I think he kind of struggles a little bit in the women department, or should I say, relationship with a woman department. <laughs> uh, I don't know if anybody is aware of this, but his his fiance. Uh, that I saw, I guess, what was it, last year? Uh, she looked like she was about maybe 26 or 27 years old. <laughs> I was like, Greg, what are you doing, man? <laughs> and uh, so, and of course, you know, Greg was uh, primarily known for being married to Cher for, uh, I think, what, for about three or four years. He was married to her for a while uh, in the 70s. Uh, and of course, you know, that, that didn't work out. Um, I actually have Greg Allman's audiobook, My Cross to Bear. And uh, if you like to listen to audiobooks or to read books in general, I would suggest to check that out. It is a very, very good book. Awesome book. But uh, yeah, it seems like Greg Allman would, uh, you know, uh, get with somebody. And he even says in the book, he says, you know, I would meet somebody and then everything would be going great. Next thing you know, they would bring up marriage, <laughs> and he's and he was was been married like six or seven times, you know, uh, something like that, give or take one or two. Uh, and he said everything was fine, and he and they got married, and everything went downhill from there. <laughs> I was like, wow. So I just I don't know. I don't, you know, who knows? Who knows? But uh, I hope I wish him well. I really do, aside from his personal stuff. I mean, that's that's stuff that he put in his book. So, you know, it's out there for people to check out. You know, uh, if he didn't want people to know that, I imagine he wouldn't have put it in his book. But And uh, he goes into detail about uh, the passing of his brother, uh, <coughs> Dwayne. Excuse me, Dwayne. And, uh, you know, Dwayne passed away at a young age. I believe he was 27 as well, I think. He died in a motorcycle crash. Uh, very tragic, uh, not far from uh, a place that the band was renting, a house they were renting at the time, they called it the Big House, uh, which is now a museum in, uh, in Georgia. That they, uh, The band had it for a while, uh, <coughs> uh, and then some time went by and they, you know, they, they, uh, couldn't afford it no more I, I you know they just they moved on and as, as time went by and all the brothers got bigger and better uh they they bought it and made it turn it to a museum which i thought was really cool because all the brothers is a big part of of that era of music uh whether people want to admit that or not they are a huge part of that music you know uh now, one thing I can say is Greg Allman did not like the term Southern Rock. He couldn't stand that, and he still can't stand it. But I guess he's used to people saying that nowadays. Uh, 
but he said he, he didn't consider them southern rock. He just considered them like a, uh, a blues jazz band that sometimes like to, you know, play some great music, rock and roll and stuff like that. Not I don't know why I said sometimes. They, they always play great music. Uh, so he wasn't crazy about that term southern rock, even though <laughs> in his book he says that term is really not used today anymore. Well, sadly, in my opinion, it is. <coughs> uh, <coughs> excuse me, it's... It is used still. I mean, it's really a category, you know. Uh, but I wanted to share something with you today that I don't, you, you may or may not know. And uh, I didn't know this until I, I read this book. And I'm looking at some excerpts from this book, and it's from Dwayne Allman's daughter, Gladrielle Allman. And she wrote this book. It's called Please Be With Me, a song from my father. Dwayne Allman by Galadriel Allman. And uh, my wife got me this hardback cover edition, which is awesome. It's got some great pictures. And I also have the audio version from Audible. Uh, if you're not familiar with Audible, they're a uh, subsidiary of Amazon. You can get on there and, and get some audio books, download them to your device, and listen to an audio book. I do it all the time, with you know, driving up and down the road because of my job. I'm on the road all the time driving a, a truck, so it's really cool to listen to some audio books, you know. Uh, I'm not really the type to get a book out and read it. It's just um, I have from time to time, but it's very, very seldom. I don't do that as much. But back to what I was saying with this from this book from Galadriel Almond, Dwayne Almond's daughter. Uh, as you know, <coughs> excuse me. As you know, uh, Dwayne Allman played on uh, Eric Clapton's album, Layla and Other Assorted Love Songs. Well, Dwayne Allman played on that, and, you know, a lot of people might think that he just played on Layla, but he actually played on more songs than that on that album. And, of course, uh, that was went on to be hugely successful. Uh, Dwayne Allman's slide work has always been highly acclaimed as just you know, phenomenal. He is uh, considered one of the best top-ranking guitar players. Uh, in Greg Allman's book, I can't remember what year it was, but Dwayne Allman was actually uh, ranked as the number two guitar player, only to be behind the number one, which is Jimi Hendrix. That's pretty good company to be in, if you ask me. So Dwayne Allman, fantastic guitar player, uh, just amazing, but and the work he did on Eric Clapton's album Layla was just phenomenal. But the thing that I wanted to bring to people's attention, <coughs> excuse me, um, was that Eric and Dwayne Allman bonded so well during the recording sessions of the Layla and other sorted love songs album. Uh, Eric went to see uh, the Allman Brothers in concert before. Uh, they were recording this album. Eric was uh, went there and saw Dwayne perform, and Dwayne saw Eric in the crowd and kind of froze. He was like, he looked at his brother Greg. He was, hey, bro, do you see who's sitting there in the audience in the front? And it was it was Eric Clapton along with uh, a couple other people that he was doing a uh, uh, a project with at the time, uh, <laughs> which would be, you know, of course Derek and the Dominoes. Um, and they did. Uh, he's like, look, man, just play. Don't worry about it. Don't let it get to you. Just do your thing. And then so uh, so they ripped into Statesboro Blues, you know, and uh, which is a cover song. But Almond Brothers, I love their version of that of that uh, song, Statesboro, Blue, Statesboro Blues. It's really awesome. Uh, so they ripped into that song, and Dwayne just did his thing, man, did his awesome slide work. And I think that just, you know, according to the things I've read, Eric was just floored. Uh Eric was not that much of a slide player. Not that he couldn't do it, but he just wasn't, you know, as proficient as like somebody like Dwayne Allman was. And uh, so uh, they watched the show, and and uh, Eric talked to Dwayne and them, and you know, and said, "Hey, man, I'd like you to come to the studio. Uh, we're working on something. I'd love you to be on it." Uh, Dwayne agreed. Uh, at this point in time. From my knowledge, the Almond Brothers were kind of taking a little break uh, 
from tour, album, tour, album, schedule. So, uh, Dwayne shows up, uh, hooks up with Eric. They get along really well. Like I said, they start going over these songs. They start, you know, discussing ideas. And, you know, it just, it, it melded together so easily and quickly that Eric cared for Dwayne so much as a, as a friend and a guitar player. He respected him, too, very, very highly. That, uh, you know, because Dwayne did a lot of session work before, you know, forming the Allman Brothers. You know, uh, ironically, Greg Allman was the last guy to join the Allman Brothers. You know, it was, uh, Dwayne had got musicians together. You know, he had, uh, you know, he, had, he got Dickie Betts. He got uh, uh, Butch Trucks, uh, J-Mo, uh, and uh, the bass player. I, I'm drawing a blank right now. So he had all those guys already together. And, uh <clears throat> So he called his brother, Greg, and said, look, man, I got a band together. You need to get down here to Florida. And uh, Greg was doing uh, some session work or some uh, recording in California. And uh, Dwayne was, uh, I think at this time, uh, he was uh, in Florida uh, when he got these guys together that would eventually be the Almond Brothers. So... Greg had to hitch a ride, somehow get a ride to, from California to Florida, and he got there. Uh, and the guy that drove Greg Allman to, uh, I guess, what would eventually be the big house, uh, he, he drove him there, and, and for some reason, the guy that drove Greg Allman uh, and his brother, Dwayne, they didn't, <clears throat> they didn't get along. Now, something, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, something had happened in some previous history with those two. And so it was kind of weird because when, when Greg Allman got there and knocked on the door, his brother Dwayne opened the door and said, hey, bro, you made it. And he looked at the guy that drove him down there and goes, hey, man, thanks for driving my brother down here and just slammed the door in his face. And that was the end of that. So, uh, But Greg Allman walked in there and, and Dwayne introduced him to everybody and said, hey, here's, you know, here's Dickie, here's J-Mo, here's Butch, you know, and, and – uh, you know, they started talking. They had some things together a little bit here and there, not, uh, you know, just really some ideas. Uh, but uh, they looked at Greg and they said, all right, what do you got? What kind of ideas do you have? You know, so they he started playing some stuff for him. And uh, he was like, man, after about 20 songs I had written or 20 ideas, I was getting nervous because they kept, you know, what else you got? What else you got? Uh, so they finally, you know, started finding some stuff that – uh that they were interested in what he had wrote, and then it just it, the history was made from there. But so Greg Allman was really the last one to join the Allman Brothers. His brother uh, Dwayne had already got everybody together, and he's told the guys he goes, "I gotta get my brother down here because he can sing," you know. So anyway, back to what I was saying, and I'm sorry for being sidetracked. <coughs> just wanted to share that with you. But Eric loved and respected Dwayne Allman uh, hugely, and the one thing that uh, that I didn't know until, you know, this book and some other things I've read was after the Layla sessions, Eric offers Dwayne Allman a job to join his group. And at the time, uh, you know, that would be what, uh, Derek and the Dominoes, I'm guessing. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, so Dwayne is, is now presented with a, not a dilemma, but he's presented with, you know, oh, man, I'm at a crossroads here. No, no pun intended, you know, for the song Crossroads. But, you know, he's like, what am I going to do? Uh, so it says here in this book, I'm just reading a couple little things uh, from this book. Please be with me, a song from my father, Dwayne Allman by Galadriel Allman. It says, uh, Eric offered two tours, one in Europe and one in the, in the United States, a high wage a friendship with an equal. Dwayne told Donna, his girlfriend at the time, which is Galadriel's mother, with a kind of awe that he had seen an entire trunk full of beautiful boots and shoes in Eric's hotel room. He had fine silk shirts, velvet pants, the best of everything. So, from what I take from that, he's, he's telling his girlfriend, he's, look, Eric is offering me this position, man. <clears throat> and I can make a lot of money 
because in the beginning, the Almond Brothers really struggled. You know, their first, I think their first uh, album didn't really do worth a, worth a hoot on the chart at all, you know. And it wasn't until uh, they released their live album, and then, of course, Dwayne got in the motorcycle wreck, that, that it, it went to number one. And that's when the money started rolling in, sadly, after Dwayne had passed. Uh, let's see. Eric gave Dwayne a beautiful batik shirt with abstract swirls that suggested peacocks in purple and deep blues on both sides of the placket. It was easily the most beautiful thing Dwayne had ever owned. In return, with humor, Dwayne gave Eric his red t-shirt that read, City Slicker. He knew Eric was offering him another kind of life. And, yeah, so it's, um, to make a long story short, you know, he he uh, he turned that down because he went back to the Almond Brothers and, and told them, you know, he said, look, they knew he was playing with Eric Clapton. They knew that. They knew what he was doing because they were taking a break, like I said. And uh, he said, look, man, Eric Clapton offered me a job to be in his band. So this is kind of similar to, in a way, you know, not just a little sidebar right here real quick. You know, when Steve Ray Vaughan was starting out and he played on David Bowie's uh, hit single, Let's Dance, you know, David Bowie offered Steve Ray Vaughan a position in his band. You know, big tours, big money. But Steve Ray Vaughan stayed true to his band and turned David Bowie down, which was a good thing because... Stevie Ray went on to be, the, you know, one of the best blues guitar players in the world. <clears throat> so Dwayne Allman did the same thing. He talked to his bandmates, you know, and they told him, they said, look, man, you've worked hard to get this band together. We've went through all this trouble of playing gigs, you know, lugging equipment up and down steps at certain venues, you know, hauling your, uh, your brother, Greg Allman, that big Hammond organ everywhere, traveling in run-down vans, uh, run-down RV, trying to get where we got to get to. And we put all this time and effort, and, you know, we, we feel that we're going to get somewhere. So you're going to give all that up to, to join Eric and just leave us, you know. I don't know if they was throwing a guilt trip on them. I wouldn't, you know, but I think they were trying to say, hey, look, man, we've worked too hard for you to just walk up and take off because they considered Dwayne – the leader of the band. <clears throat> they considered him the guy, <clears throat> excuse me, that did all the talking. Like when there was something with a, uh, anything to do with any kind of contract negotiations or anything to do with management, uh, anything to do with uh, uh, gigs, uh, you name it. Dwayne Allman took care of all that. He was the talker, and he didn't he didn't back down from nobody. He was a, a really nice dude from what I read, real nice guy. But he just didn't, he didn't take no shit off nobody, you know, pardon my French. So, uh, you know, so, but he, he turned Eric down uh, with, you know, he told him, he said, look, man, I really appreciate what, what you're doing for me or what you're offering me, but I just, I can't do that to my brothers. So Eric understood, and of course, Eric went his way, and Dwayne stayed with the Almond Brothers, and uh, like I said, they had huge success, but sadly, Dwayne passed away in 1970, 70 or 71, and uh, I can't be quite sure on that date, I know it was right around Halloween, it was toward, yeah, it was like a few days before Halloween, and I want to say it was in 1970, I uh, could be wrong on that date, I have to look it up, but <clears throat> of course, uh, Eric was wanting to introduce Dwayne to Jimi Hendrix as well, ain't that something, I mean, in 1970, and as we know, on September 18th, that's when Hendrix passed away. Uh, he was, you know, he told Dwayne, he said, he said, look, man, I've, I've met Jimi Hendrix, you know, we're friends, and I'd like, when he comes back to the States from England, I'd like to introduce you to him, and Dwayne was really jacked up about that, man. He was like, oh, my God, you know, because they, you know, at that time, you know, you're talking 1970, you know, you're talking, you know, 46, 46, 47 years ago, and so the music was a lot different back then. And at that time period, Jimi Hendrix was the best guitar player in the world. 
you know, and he's still renowned as such, you know. He is, in my opinion. Gee, he's amazing. Uh, so that would have been a cool deal, man. Can you imagine, you know, being able to see Hendrix live back then, you know, just to uh, – just for the experience. Again, no pun intended, but, you know, a lot of people have asked me, you know, if if time travel was possible, if you could go back anywhere in time, where would you go? And I'd say, well, I like to go back and see the where Jimmy performed at Woodstock, you know, and just kind of be like on the side of the stage or something. But you know, of course, we know that's not <laughs> that's not possible. But but uh, but yeah, but of course, you know, Dwayne never got to meet Jimmy, and of course, that you know that didn't come to fruition. And uh, so. Yeah, it's uh, and you know, over time, Greg Allman and Eric Clapton have become really, really close. They've done some benefits uh, for certain things, and uh, and Eric has been gracious enough to join them on stage for Layla and stuff like that. And I think that's really, really cool. It just shows the kind of uh, heart and character that Eric Clapton is, and. Uh, <clears throat> I think that's amazing. So if I'm not mistaken, I want to say that, you know, well, all those guys, you know, a couple of, of band members of the Almond Brothers have passed. You know, uh, Butch Trucks passed away. Uh, who else? Uh, J-Mo, I think he's passed away, I believe, the other drummer. I believe. I could be wrong. Oh, man, I want to say that's who it was. Uh, so, uh Greg Allman is what, like, I think he's hitting on 70 right there at it, and I believe Eric is is that as well. So, you know, things have changed a lot, a whole lot, but those, you know, Eric Clapton, of course, Allman Brothers and a bunch of other uh, bands from that era put out some great, fantastic, just historic music that has stood the test of time, and and Layla being one of those, you know, when you hear that song, when you hear that, especially that ending piano uh, riff at the end of that song, <laughs> you can't help but just, you know, I mean, even today, I'm like, man, that is just so, such a beautiful piece. And it's kind of wild because when they did that song, then when Dwayne was there recording it in the studio, like I was talking about a few minutes ago, that piano part wasn't in there. They added that in. Uh, at the very end and uh you know so uh they got Dwayne in there to add them little slide those little bird slide chirps or whatever you know at the very end and uh so that was you know because at first they weren't going to have that and they decided to put it in at the last minute which which is one thing that makes that song so historic that's just a beautiful piano piece with the Dwayne's slide work and everything else I think that's awesome it's just fantastic. So a lot of great music. You know, music today, in my opinion, is just, you know, I, I don't I don't care for it. You know, I, I guess I'm in my own little world, my own bubble, uh, so to speak. Uh, there are certain things I'll, I'll listen to, but it's just, you know, I don't even listen to the radio no more, man. It's just, you know, things are crazy in music nowadays. It's just I just like doing my own thing. And uh, listening to the classics, you know, listening to the good stuff, you know, when, when music was good, when music, when you could actually go and buy albums. I mean, I know you can still buy albums today, but you know what I'm saying? Back in the day, man, when you could go to the record store and stuff like that, it was it was cool, you know, actually get an album and or even the cassette or whatever and be inside a record store and see all the cool posters and the promotional things for what was coming out that week or, or whatever. And... Uh, it's just, I don't know, man. Music has changed so much. It's just, uh, so I just stick with the good stuff that I grew up listening to, you know, I guess just like my parents did when they got older and they liked listening to music of their gold, you know, their golden years, I guess. No, nah, their younger years, I guess that'd be better. And, uh, you know, their youth. So, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. Even country music is is changed a lot, you know. Uh, not putting it down, but it's just it's just different. But things change with uh, you know, 
it, it all goes it depends on who's buying the stuff and that's what makes the money nowadays you know the stuff that sells the most and it sure is not rock <laughs> it doesn't seem that way i could be wrong that's just my opinion but you know it is what it is so anyway this is going to about wrap it up for uh the joe Lynch project podcast i appreciate you joining thank you very much for tuning in if you did uh, give this a thumbs up, if you will. I'd really appreciate it. Be sure to check me out at thejoewinchproject.com and uh, check out uh, a couple of my friends on YouTube as well. We got uh, Johnny Bean on YouTube. That's Johnny B E A N E on YouTube. He's got a great channel over there. Talk about EVH guitars and and gear, and uh, he even does videos on uh, some. Uh, some uh, like Van Halen guitar lessons, like little snippets of lessons he does. It's really cool. Um, and uh, Philip McKnight is really cool. His channel is great as well. Uh, I got a friend named uh, Will, a uh, humbucker lover. He is just starting a channel. and uh, So go show him some love over there. He's trying to get things rolling and get started, and I wish him the best of luck as well. Uh, they're good people over there, man. And... Um, so that's going to wrap it up for today. And uh, come back and visit us again, man. Come back on this channel. Check out the other videos I have available. Uh, there's all kind of cool stuff, man. Guitar-related videos, uh, daily vlogs, uh, this podcast-style thing here that I just wanted to try today to see how it would turn out. You know, so, <laughs> so we'll see. Again, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Hope you have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there. If you go anywhere, if you're working when you're on the way home from work, be careful. And God bless everybody. Until next time, this is Joe for the Gentleman's Project. Goodbye.